Hello friends, hola amigos, today I'm going to show you this 70 May A200 dual recording dash cam. Welcome to this new video. So before we start, I have to say that 70 May sent me the dash cam to show my channel. But as always, I give you my honest opinion. So first we check the box, do the unboxing. We'll look at the product in detail. And now we'll do the installation in the car. And then I will share some live footage from daytime and nighttime. I will compare it to my A500S dual recording dash cam. So first the box, as you can see this feels like a high quality product. see some specifics here now this a200 dash cam is a dual recording so it comes with, so you can install it with a rear cam as well this dash cam is one of the lower priced models with an own screen and it comes officially for the dash cam only for 100 euro but at AliExpress you almost always have some action. The dash cam only comes from 62 euros. When you add the hardware kit, you pay 15 euros more. When you want to have the front and rear cam, 85 euros. And if you buy this set and you add a little memory card from them as well, it costs you about 100 euros. The SD card that is sent is a Egypt 64. It's a Chinese brand, but the benchmark tests are okay. Now the dash cam records at high definition, 1080 pixels in HDR. Now the field of view is at 130 degrees, so that's good for three lanes. This model doesn't have GPS, so it films, it records, but you can't add your speed or location to it. And for the night vision, they have their night owl vision, as they call it. So the image sensor on this dash cam is a GC2093 for the front camera and a GC2053 for the rear cam. And the aperture is f. 2.0 Now let's see what's in the box In the first, first envelope we have the electric static stickers So the idea is that you stick this little piece of plastic on your windshield So the rectangular one is for the back and the circular one is for the front. So you can see that I have two of both, so that is really nice. And due to electrostatic forces, it will hold by itself. And on top you will stick the double side tape, and on this tape comes the mount. So this way you won't damage your windshield. You can easily peel it off. And I once had to replace my windshield and I simply pull this off, put it directly in a clean plastic bag and when I took it out, I could stick it easily back on the windshield again. And the small sticker is for the back, of course. So you can see you have the places really well lined out, so that is easy to use. And the instructions on the sheet are clear as well. And over here we have the power adapter and the pine tool. It comes with a normal USB A secret lighter. The little prying tool in order to hide the cable. Now we have one cable to connect 
the dash cam to the power source and then we have the longer cable that connects the rear cam to the dash cam. Then we have the rear cam itself. As you can see it will stick on the windshield like this and then you can still turn it in order to adjust to the right angle. And then we have the dash cam itself. So it isn't really big. You can see this stick on the windshield. And here as well, you can adjust the angle. There's a little status light. All black with like dark gray anthracite camera. Here you have your power. Here you have your rear cam and here you have your SD card slot. Now for the buttons, the big one is the power button. And then you have the buttons to navigate through the menus. So with this setup, you only have recording when driving. So the camera will activate automatically as soon as you unlock the car. And it will turn off when you lock the car. And in the menus you can set how many time after locking the car that should be. You can also opt for the hardwire kit and when you use the hardwire kit the camera gets power to record when driving but it also gets power to stay in parking mode and it's a standby mode is where it records as soon as the car senses g-forces. So when somebody hit the car you have it on film. That's the parking surveillance mode. You can also film in time lapse and then it will film all the time, but you can see it in videos with high speed. In time lapse, you only have the front camera. In parking surveillance, you have front and back in the same time. And last but not least, we have this little cover. There you go. So this is to be able to remove the dash cam if needed. So it holds up on the car like this. And if you push it upwards, you can remove the camera because in certain countries it is prohibited to drive with a dash cam. So now that's it for the dash cam itself. Let's go to the car and do the installation. Now for the installation in the car, as you can see, I already have my a500s camera in the front and the other one in the back and the cables are all well hidden so i will share the footage of the installation of that dash cam in this video as it is exactly the same so the idea is to install it in a place where it isn't too much inside but where you still have a great view my last dash cam was installed a little bit more downwards and on videos you could clearly see this part i will have to check if i will put it just on top of here this way i can still clearly see this screen use the buttons and the camera should film just beside of the dots another option could be here just behind the rear mirror but there it could be a little bit more tricky to see the screen if you don't move the mirror first. Another option could be on the other side, but it won't be that easy to manipulate the dash cam when you're driving. And another option could be down here, but I think it's too prominent. But most important, connect your dash cam first. See the image on your phone. This way you can see if the dash cam viewing angle is really great or not. So let's do so. And you can see it is recording directly. So now let's search for a good place. So here the windshield is a little bit angled. So I especially have the left side. But right here I will get a better angle of the whole front. But let me check if I still can place the rear mirror as it should. Maybe it will be wiser to place it a little bit lower than 
So I'll place it right over here. So the nice thing about this sticker is you have this dotted area. Placing it up here, I can use the dots to align them with the sticker. So it should be perfectly straight. Now the second step to install the camera itself. Remove the sticker fully. And that's what it looks like when using it. And this is what it looks like when you're driving and you have your rear view mirror just in front. So in the back, I have quite some space be between the window and the roof liner. So I think I will guide the cable behind this plastic part and then go down through this cable protector, this grommet, and then I'm into the car. So I think the camera is somewhere in the middle right here. Just be careful that you don't film the line just in the middle of your image for that you could connect the camera and check. But it mentions also that you can't disconnect or connect your camera while it's on so it just told me that it connected a rear camera so let's switch to that view and it is hard to see in this image but the rear view is fine i don't see any lines so i could use this reference so the electric static sticker is installed the camera is sticked on top of it and now i'm going to hide this cable i remove this grommet i remove this rubber seal and then you can slide your hand just between and if you look here there is a hole just down there that you can reach from inside so I guided the cable from here retrieved it in the hole and then guided through this rubber grommet really hard because it just fits with a stick connector but with a little guiding cable I managed to do so after all and I'm going to do the same thing over here so attach this connector to this cable and guide it through here so I just pull really hard on this one and then you have access and you can feed the cable through now I can connect it together and close everything up here and now I can guide the cable into the car so logically you have two solutions one solution is that you go down here and you go up to the front again. Uh, the other solution is that you follow the roof up to here. So uh, just follow the roof liner and that is really, really easy to do. You just tuck it in like this where needed. Like here you can use the little tool they provide to tuck the cable well in and then you follow the way up to the front so the installation is complete from there it goes into the ceiling to the grommet it comes back in the interior of the car and the cable is guided all the way here really easy to do so it follows the liner the rubber seal and there it goes up it follows the liner to the dash cam. There was a little bit too much cable, so I folded it back to the left and back to the right three times. There's enough space to hide the cable. And then the cable of the main dash cam is going up there behind this plastic cover. And it follows the ceiling over here on the A pillar and it follows the rubber seal over there. You can still see it a little bit here. 
this on the side behind this panel there you can still see it a little bit and then behind this panel behind the carpet and then behind that panel and comes back to the power socket so that's one way you could eventually also use the power socket that's in here and therefore you don't go downwards but you follow the liner up to here then you go down and here you guide the cable behind behind the seat and then you can pass it behind this felt cover and go into the center console that's the way if you want to use the plug and play cables now i will show you the hardwire solution so now we're going to hardwire the dash cam for this i bought this additional hardwire kit it comes with three really small cables one for the ground one for the continuous power and one for the accessory so this one is switched and this one is continuous so i attached this little ring to it to attach it to the ground and i add these to add a circuit So you can see you have to use this size of fuse, which is micro. And I ordered additional fuses as well. The fuse panel. And there it is, the fuse panel. So of course, technically you could use every fuse you want, but it is wise to see into your fuse panel and make sure that you use a fuse that is safe to use earlier i made a special video about the fuses and which one is safe to use here you can see that, that video and in that video i also share this little schema in the schema you can see in detail what fuses it is used for what and which one is safe to use or not so you have to look to it like this and you can see the extended storage here that is this big white button and in the schema you will discover that the whole lower row is blue and that means that it is continuous and the upper row is almost all yellow and that means that it is switched so for the ground I can use this bolt and now I have to look for two good places for my continuous power and my switched power so in the shima you can see that there are also some spare fuses those aren't used yet so those are of course safe to use i have place here to put it on as well so the 10 amperes could be a great one to use and for the switched one i can use the sick lighter in the front and the power socket so the power socket, the second one, so the second one here, that's the power socket that is in the front. I will use that as well. You should know that there is a position in which they should be placed. So let's measure my continuous first. I will use the multimeter. I attach the black wire onto the metal part. I will switch the car on. And now let's put the multimeter on 20. And in the fuse we're going to look for which what is the switch side and which one is the draw side. So when I touch in the lower part, I can see that have almost 12 volts and when I touch in the upper part like this are zero volt so now let's do the same thing for the upper fuse and 
There you go. So there as well, it is the lower part that gets the 12 volt. So why is the position important? So the power comes in from the lo lower part, goes through one fuse and back to the circuit, or it goes in and goes to the second added circuit. If you put the added circuit piggyback the wrong way in, the power will always go through both fuses and if there's something going wrong, you will blow both fuses as well. Here's my continuous fuse. There's my accessory fuse. I hide the cables over here with a little bit protection tape so it doesn't rub onto this metal part. There's my ground. And here I hide the little hard wire box. Well tucked away so it doesn't rattle. And now I'm going to feed the cable behind this rubber seal up to the dash cam. So here it goes directly in. It follows the, the liner. And here you can just go down. And now I can tuck this cable away. And there it is. The cable hide it. Everything is still is really good accessible, nothing dangles around. Now for the comparison of both, I will install the A200 just over here. Now I did a really quick setup, you can see on the left. You can see on the left my original camera and there the new one. I just guided the cables around there to be quick. They come over here and here they go into my new dash cam. Now let's insert the SD card. Let's remove the protection tape as well. And now we're all ready to plug the USB cable in. This you can do manually, but you can also do it after connecting to the application. It's as you like. So there's no parking surveillance cable. I just plugged it into the USB, but later on we will try it with my hardware kit. I already downloaded the application. So I guess I will have to format the SD card first in my PC. Just for now, I will insert my own SD card. I always have a spare one in the car. It isn't really large, but it's better than nothing. Now I have the format, this memory card. And now it's recording like the other dash cam. I can turn the camera a little bit. We can start recording an emergency video. We 
you can check the album. You can see both front and back. Now we go back to the main screen. And the last button is for the settings. So this is really great, they added more options. So here I can set the on or off tone. That is nice because I really think it's annoying to have those tunes for on and off. Then the button sounds is no problem. Audio recording, yes, I want to like audio recording as well. The speaker volume, I'll set it to low. So that option seems to mirror the rear cam. So now let's download the application and walk through all the options over there. Therefore we have to activate the hotspot as well. Just already do so. The and now we can connect our Telephones Wi-Fi to the Wi-Fi hotspot 70My A209E83 with this password. Now let's go to the Wi-Fi settings. Connect to the dash cam. And now I'm connected to the dash cam itself. Now let's go to the 70 May app that I already downloaded. Okay, I see that my Pro Plus has an upgrade, but let's skip this for now. Let's add a new dash cam, dash cam with screen. I connect to the hotspot. I have to confirm on the dash cam itself. Okay. So now I see my image here. I can see the al album. Don't remind me. Let's see the emergency video that I just made, the extended camera. So now I have all my settings again. So the encoding format, high compression, the resolution, 
clip duration i think one minute is just perfect it makes downloading clips really easy and fast where when you pick three minutes downloading your clips will take forever i would like to have to 70 may logo Remind that this device doesn't have GPS integrated, so you won't have your speed visible on the dash cam itself. Now, blink resistance for Europe, this is NTSC. Mirroring and rotation, so here you can see my rear cam. I can mirror it if I want, and I can also rotate the image if needed. Now I have my parking security. I don't have my hardware kit connected yet, so I can't use these options right now. We will test this later on. Smart travel. So this is where you can set if it has to record emergency videos and the sensitivity of that. The power on off prompt tones. Speaker volumes, key tone, record audio, language, there are quite some languages integrated. The screensaver mode, so you can have your screen always on, you can turn it off, but the screensaver mode makes it show the time. And there we dive in, into the screensaver. Quite nice feature as well. Auto off when no movement persists. And here we can set our dash cam system time so you can calibrate it with your telephone if you want. Date format, I like the European style. So day, month, year. And you have your reset options. So that is quite straightforward. We can toggle between the recording on or off. And we can make a picture if you want. Now I'll show you some footage while driving in daytime with cloudy weather. As you can see it snows quite heavily here in Belgium. I'll also will show you some image while driving at night time.
and I will show you some footage while driving on a sunny day still with lovely views on the snowy fields so I really love this region And then I'll show the comparison between my normal dash cam and the A200. When we compare both dash cams side to side, we can see that the front dash cam is almost as good. The field of view isn't that bad and you can hardly see the difference. On the A200, the image is a little bit less bright, but still the license plates are still clearly visible. At nighttime, the image is great as well. And from the back dash cam, you can see no difference, I might say. If you're not looking for GPS tracking or driving aids, the A200 is just perfect for you. Now, with that done, I can go into the menu, go to the parking surveillance option, Poison detection on, sensitivity, let put it on high, response immediately, and there you go. And time lapse recording, let's do that as well. Okay, and now we're all set. Let's just check in the options. So it never stops, so that is good. So when I turn off the car, it will go into parking surveillance mode automatically. And then it will detect shocks and record the video. And the time lapse mode will film, but only with the front camera, time lapse, so the accelerated images of what's happened here. Now with the parking surveillance on, you can also see the icon of the parking surveillance and the little time-lapse icon. Now here we see a parking surveillance video and funny enough, the car wasn't shocked, but there is some movement in front of the car. You see the kids are playing in front. So I think it's a bug, but still quite handy to have everything that happens around your car. And here we can see a time-lapse video at night time and you see the accelerated images of everything that happens in front of the car. I can switch to the rear cam here. I can activate an emergency video. I can go to the settings and here I can visit the album so I can see all videos that are my driving videos but I can also see the emergency video now when we take a closer look at the SD card you can see that every event has its dedicated folder and every folder has a dedicated space so the parking surveillance won't take any more space of your normal recordings and with my 64 gigabytes SD card I could record with dual recording for five and a half hours. And when we look at the recordings themselves, you can see that they are clearly arranged with timestamps and they end with a B for the rear cam and with an F for the front cam. So overall, this A200 dash cam is a really nice dash cam for those who want a simple setup, plug and play. The screen is big enough to see the images directly in the car and still the dash cam itself is small enough to be discreetly mounted in the car itself. 
the SD card that came with it did work well after all, but you have to format it first yourself. So that's a little bit strange. But this said, this combination is really a nice dash cam. If you don't want to break the bank and you still want to have a good quality dash cam. So let me know in the comments what you think about this dash cam. Don't forget to share, like and subscribe and I'll see you in the very next video. Bye bye.